for the morning class 12D. So, uh, as I told you in the previous class about the today we'll be doing protectionism. In the previous class, I spoke about free trade. So, I told you the opposite of free trade is protectionism. Free trade, where we freely trade with other countries, where the production rises, okay. And uh, uh, there are no uh, tariffs and quotas involved and countries can freely send their commodities to other countries as well as bring it from other countries. So now we saw that free trade, though it has some advantages, it definitely brings about a lot of dis disadvantage to the industries which are there within the country which cannot cope up with the competition that arises because of free trade. So the opposite of free trade, what countries have started doing to protect the new growing industries within their country, we have started protectionism which is the opposite of free trade. Now what is protectionism? Here the government tries to restrict trade. We are trying to restrict trade. That does not mean there is no trade. Restriction of trade means we are trying to put tariffs and quotas and laws and barriers into place when we are importing and exporting goods and commodities from one country to another. Now why we put barriers and taxes and tariffs and quotas is if India has some new industry which has not laid its roots within the country which cannot compete in the international market to protect that particular industry, to allow that particular industry to set its roots, to grow, to flourish and later when, when the production of that uh, industry increases, then we allow it to trade with other countries. So what is the idea behind protectionism of the government is to restrict the trade so that your domestic industries can flourish. They get time to, pro to produce their commodities and they get time to set their roots into the country. Right? So this is the idea behind protectionism. Uh, one simple, very simple example of protecting your industries within your country is what the government does it does is it restricts trade from those countries which have not taken action to reduce pollution or which have not taken action to reduce greenhouse gases. You do not allow the products from that country to come into your country. This is also a kind of protectionism. So you are protecting not only your domestic industries but you are also protecting your country's environment. Somebody who doesn't follow laws, somebody who is just dumping uh, products into your country which may create hazards and pollution into your country, you deny trade with that particular country. This is also a form of protectionism, right? Now protectionism, what is the advantage of protectionism? First is, if a country, as I told you, wants to promote a new industry that has been set up in the country, for that protection of that country, protectionism is beneficial as it will protect the growing industry from already established foreign competitors. So you don't have many foreign competitors because you have restricted trade. So because there is no competition or the competition is very less, this particular industry gets a chance to flourish. Right? One advantage. The second advantage of protectionism is, uh, is it also helps to lower unemployment in your country. So when you have your industry in your country in place and you are trying to increase the productivity, you need to hire labors inside the industry. So many, many unemployed youth, they also get employment in the domestic industries. So this is the advantage of protectionism, right? This advantage, if we are to talk about this advantage of protectionism, is what is happening? We are restricting foreign trade. We are not allowing all the commodities to flow into your uh, country. So competition definitely reduces. There is reduced competition. And when there is reduced competition, what happens is the industries are no longer innovative. 
they will not try new technologies to sell their products. So because competition is very, very limited, what happens is in terms of innovation, in terms of enhancement, uh, industries become very, very weak and lazy, right? And the second uh, disadvantage of protectionism is because we are too much trying to protect the domestic industries and not allowing foreign products to come into your country. As I told you, in free trade, as a consumer, how am I benefited with free trade? There are hundreds of products flowing from other countries into my country. So as a consumer, I have an array of products to choose from. So whatever satisfies my demands, I can choose that product. But what happens is, uh, with uh, protectionism is consumer dissatisfaction arises because you have to purchase the products uh, that is uh, produced within your country. Since we have restricted trade from other countries, consumer, uh, consumers are forced to buy what is in front of them. That is, most of the products now become your domestic products. So, it may lead to consumer dissatisfaction. So this is about free trade and protectionism both having their own set of advantage and disadvantage. Then the next part of your topic which we have done earlier also is about it talks of transnational companies which are also better known as MNCs that is multinational corporations. So why in the environment do we study about multinational corporation is to understand how they degrade the host country, how they degrade the environment, how a developed country is taking the advantage over underdeveloped and developing countries. So there are numerous examples. <clears throat> For the ones who have not understood multinational corporation, they are uh, units whose headquarter is in a foreign country, in the, uh, most of the time in a developed country. But what they do is, they set up subsidiary units in the developing or most of the time in the underdeveloped third world countries to gain benefits. Like if you talk of the Pepsi and Coke company, we have the industries in India in many many places, but they are not Indian companies, they are USA based companies. So, the subsidiary branches have been set up in our country and how is in, uh, India's environment ruined because of Pepsi and Coke? It is only water and carbon dioxide which is mixed. But what has happened in India when USA set up the company in India? We have to dig almost uh, 10 million gallons of water every day to satisfy the demands of Pepsi industry, the coke industry. 10 million gallons of underground water is utilized by the Pepsi industries so much that our own agricultural lands suffer from deficiency of water. This is one example of how the developing country's environment gets degraded because of MNC. So why do we accept an MNC when we are degrading our environment? It is the only reason why developing countries allow the MNCs to function into your country is because majority of your youth get employment in the MNC. So only because of employment reasons, we readily accept the MNCs into our country. So this is Pepsi and Coke, one example, how they degrade the environment. Not to forget about the Bhopal gas tragedy, which occurred in Madhya Pradesh, you have to understand that this was not an Indian company. This was a pesticide company again of the US. And what happened during the Gopal gas tragedy, all of you know how carelessness uh, went on to the leakage of methyl isocyanate gas. So this is one deadly uh, example of MNC and how they have destroyed your country's environment. The next is the Shell and Exxon, which was a mobile company that was set up in the Niger Delta. And uh, Shell is particularly uh, spoken of, it's the target of criticism because they never cleared up the pollution that they created in the tribal land of the 
uh, Afghani people caused by because of the oil pipeline leaking. So we see numerous examples of multinational corporations and how they have gone to degrade the environment very, very badly. So your ISC question will be asked based on this: what is the ecological impact of multinational corporation? Meaning, how have they destroyed the environment? So there are many points given on page number 151, uh, few, uh, around 4 to 5 you will have to know. Uh, number 1, uh, it is the MNC who is responsible for the increase in greenhouse gases. They do not follow any pollution regulation norms that are set up in the developing countries and they are the ones responsible for global warming. Then CFCs which have been banned all over the world because of the depletion of ozone layer, still the MNCs utilize CFCs in manufacturing many, many products. Then mining, if you have an MNC in India, they are not going to get the raw materials from their country, but they are going to mine your country's earth to get their resources. So lion's share in mining is done by the MNCs. Especially in countries like India, 80% of your agricultural land is controlled by the MNCs where they produce those commodities that has to be exported to other countries. So much that your own people, your own uh, country people do not get their supply. Then the MNCs are also responsible for the manufacture of chlorine which has given rise to the world's deadliest pesticides that is the DDT. Uh, the, it is known as the world's deadliest uh, pesticide, pesticide which contains chlorine. So in spite of knowing the defects, the MNCs still go on to manufacture these products. Right? So these are some of the ways in which MNCs have uh, destroyed the environment and the health of the people of developing and the underdeveloped nations. So we are just left with uh, two very important uh, topics that is GATT and free trade, uh, free trade. I will be talking about these two in the next lecture. Thank you class.